So, let's talk a little bit about Dark Tide and the state of the game. So right now, we are, what, 18 days after the, 18 days after the launch, the official launch. So, I guess this is going to be a, kind of a, a short review or and a little bit of a, my thoughts on the game right now. So first off, this thing, you have to camp out the, the, um, the in-game shop to actually get the stuff you want. There should be more stuff here. In my opinion. Because right now, this is the... This is the thing that we keep on doing. And I'm fairly sure everybody is doing like this. In on every character, when the shop resets. And check if there's anything good for any one of our guys, uh, of our, of our guys, or if you're playing gals, or if you, well, yeah, you you get the, you get the point. So, so dark tide, current state of it, it's not perfect. But I do still think it's good. I know that some people will say that this is basically rubbish because, well, it's it's kind of bad. To be honest, some of the things make it bad, but overall, even though you hear me in the in the videos. I, uh, I kind of call out that, well, for fuck's sake, he shouldn't have hit, the, the dog shouldn't have hit me through the fucking wall, stuff like that. I still, I, I'm still enjoying it, so, based on that, it must be good. But, one of the things that's bad is this. You have to camp the... Camp the uh, the uh, shop. There, there's a solution to this. Either have more items in the shop, or or re-roll it more often, or re-roll it after every time you've either completed or lost a mission. Now oh, that might be a bad one because people are gonna start a mission and then fail it just to re-roll the shop, but... Um... There's also one more thing that you can do to mitigate this, and that's actually give... give a weapon at the end of each mission. Basically like in Vermintide. You always get a chest with three items. So you could do just give a random weapon. Always. There's always a random weapon waiting for you when you're done. That would fix a lot of issues too. So. I mean... It's never gonna be perfect, but it might just be good enough. Anyway, should this game have been delayed? Yeah, it probably should have. A month more, maybe? Iron Knight the Kinks, because right now 
we basically have an unfinished game. Or is that classified as a live service game? No, they have been stating that it's a live, ser li live service game, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's features missing, crafting. They have stated that they wanted to. They wanted to redo the the whole system, and well, if you've seen how it works, I'll give you a quick tour. Otherwise, so you can concentrate create items, and then you basically send it. A tier higher, which is the same that you could do in Vermintide. In Refine, you can re-roll one of the the perks and re-bless. There's been talk about you can basically disenchant an item and then take its blessing and then throw it onto something or change the blessing don't know which which kind it's gonna be yet but yeah also the weapons In time, you will return. they said that we're gonna launch with more weapons than they have so that's kind of bad, but I do believe that they wanted to have a few of them more, but I guess they were un too unreliable, maybe? Which, well, fair enough, but then they should have communicated that better, I believe. And... Well, the weapon balance is kind of kind of strange for some weapons. I mean, the the heavy sword or the silt, for example, is just not good at all. Some some say that there's one version of it that is actually decent. I haven't gotten around tr to trying that one, mainly because it's not been shown up in the shop for me. So, anyway. It's a minor thing, since, well, they have said that they're gonna keep true and add all those weapons over time, so. I mean, they gave us the power mall. Was it power mall? Yeah, the power mall. Which, well, I tried two times, and it's not for me. But they added this and the two-handed version version for this salad, which I haven't even tried yet. I bought one that's has decent stats, but I've not been, I've not had the opportunity to use it yet. So, yeah. Anyway, the big bad is the server lag, performance drops, Lack of optimization. And those three things basically ties into everything. The server lag, some of so, some of my videos, you will see me basically pushing and blocking and doing all of that. And I, I 
they're not staggered or I hit them but they don't die so on and so forth so it can make or break a run to have server lag and performance drops also a thing now I got 3090, 3080, 30, 3080 Ti. So it's by no means a bad setup to run this. And my CPU is very, very good too. Can't remember which one it is. But it should run, run better. So, I mean, you can see it quite clearly with the when you're playing the game. The Hound and the Mutant, the erratic things, they're jumping around and it's very hard to consistently dodge them or kill them. And the Mutant, well, it's also, sometimes when you dodge it, I feel like I've mistimed it, so I should be caught and I don't, and sometimes when I time it perfectly, I still get caught, which, in my opinion, that feels kind of bad. But, yeah. I should actually get that one, shouldn't I? Just upgrade it and see if it's good later. So I basically started this because I started to record this because it's a new hour, so I can check everything once more. But one thing to fix this issue that I'm doing right now, it's probably quite boring to watch, but Rewards after the after a mission. That is quite easy, and if you scale it up with the difficulty, it it actually gives players incentive to play harder. I want to play harder because I want a big challenge. I know there are a lot of a lot of people out there who are like me, but I've seen people say that there's no reason to play this game at more than more than malice and difficulty. And to me, that's kind of sad. There's no reason to play it in harder difficulties. That kind of goes to the longevity of the game. So we, we need we need rewards or another incentive to play harder difficulties. And we also need one more thing at the end of a mission and that's a stat screen. I know I commented on this when back in the closed beta and it's very hard to to know if you actually filled your role role in your team don't know how much damage I did I don't know how many elites I killed if I'm playing I don't know how to improve or when to improve should probably buy that one too I have never tried the power sword with this guy, but I do want to. So, I guess I have a reason now. Anyway, so the stat screen would be beneficial if it actually included things like for the Ogryn 
like damage you've blocked with the shield or the amount of stagger you do because I mean the official reason was that toxicity things if you play and someone does less damage then you would would want to bash him for not doing damage and yeah I can see that but I know and a lot of people that I play with know that doing damage when there's no need to is kind of wasted doing damage when you should try be trying to stagger or trying to control the horde or sniping specials more kills is actually worse Which is, well, might be hard to, it, it's a little bit, should get that one too, nice. I actually gotten, what, two weapons? Will there be I guess, else? that are upgrades. Anyway, Goodbye. damage blocked and stagger would be things if I'm comparing to if I'm comparing to the um, the uh, stat screen for the from Verm Vermintide, also the weeklies, I really think it was it should be shared across you across your all of your characters because up. now these are kind of. Easy to do. Didn't even know I had done them. But some of these are harder for for different different people or different characters. So the weeklies should share between all, all characters they have said that they would look into it let's actually actually check for another character for now I played this one quite recently tried to do some get some levels on him to learn and stuff but yeah Let's check his weeklies. And while we do that, so the maps or the map pool or the what do they call it? The matchmaking bucket. I know there's a bunch of guys that are very good at both this and Vermintide who I've been following and looking for tips and tricks for a long while. It's refreshing to converse with one who knows their place. They are advocating for for um, being able to choose specific maps, specific objectives so you can queue for what what map you want. And I don't know if everyone understands that the matchmaking bucket, the more buckets you have, the harder it is to fill each mission to actually find four players for a mission. So there's also a way around that. And that is to basically allow it but give quick play the quick play matchmaking uh, a better reward so that more people are using quick play and are incentivized to use it so that way you kinda because quick plays you can distribute until 
into all of the buckets if you want, or you could have have the um, the priorities to be to be on the outliers or something like that. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. And well, I think these. I mean, this one. Finish six secondary missions. It's kind of. Well, d do I need to, to, pick up? Do I, do we need to carry both of the Grims to the end or? What? It's kind of hard when you're trying to push difficulty to do things like this, even though it says, says it's a low complexity thing. But if you're always trying to get a better, uh, a higher, higher difficulties than you should be in, you're gonna have have people die. Like uh, my first, first ever. Heresy run clear was with the Psyker at level 7. So that's how I want to play it. So. The matchmaking bucket. The, this, is, this is the missions that are currently available. And, I mean, these are what? These are the same, but different difficulties. Yeah, these are the same, but different difficulties. So one, two, and three, yeah, fine. And then one, two, two, three, three, it's all different. So if you want to play the hardest one, basically going to be matched with this map, with hunting rounds, and that's it. So there either needs to be more missions up for each difficulty, like we have Two for difficulty one, one, two, three for difficulty two, and well, th two, three for difficulty three, We've got three for difficulty four, so fives are the ones that are short handed then. Oh. Well, I guess there's going to be less players there, so it kind of makes makes sense with the with the bucket. But I mean, play random mission with shorter queue times, and then make this a comma, and with a little bit better rewards, and then you can you, you can see where I'm going with this. That would, I I mostly play quick play. Just for I, I don't I don't I don't care what map I play because I don't know. That's just how I am. So, but some people do, and some people need their fix with with diversity and well and they should be able to in my opinion so give more people incentive to play quick play and let people choose whatever they want to and if 
the buckets get too many, I'll increase the rewards for quick play. That's my my idea, at least. So those are the things I think are bad and are still bad since the beta. Many of the issues I had with the beta are actually resolved, so but these persist. So neutral things I have to say about the game. So there's been hot debate about the... it's only four classes, that's the argument. And most people do kind of say that, well, you had 15 different, different characters to play. Well, you had five different characters, but each had three different specializations, so 15 15 different specs to play, 15 different classes, and each character shared the same, the same, um, each, each specific specialization for each specific character shared the same weapon sets with a few outliers, like the Slayer couldn't use shielded weapons and none of the other other Bardian specs could use dual, dual wield, wielding axes. But the rest of the stuff, basically, most of the weapon pack is the same for every character. And while I agree we want more classes, I still think that these four classes that we have right now are actually they are diverse enough because it's not only tied to the classes anymore I mean if we take and I have to change operative again just to show so some weapons you don't have some some weapons are for a specific character like the plasma gun for the veteran the thunder hammer for the zealot and the staffs for the psyker but Other than that, most weapons can be used. So, for example, the the uh, the uh, zealot can use the last rifle, and some uh, several versions of it. The the veteran can also use it, and the psychic can also use it. Same with the revolver. Same with the auto guns. Same with the combat shotgun. I don't know if, if the psychic can use combat shotgun, but yeah. And the bolter, both solid and veteran can use those. But the unique one is the flamer for the priest. But oh, it's it's. You, you can you can mix match what you're doing and what you're good at, at as a, a, in a different way I mean if I want to if I want to actually do some crowd clearing I could use the thunder hammer and still have that activated ability to slap elites in the face and do m much much damage or I could use the crusher and basically become well, 
an ogren in terms of crowd control and stagger ability. But uh, every weapon still has the potential of what the character is actually good at. Like the Ogren has, regardless of what weapon he has, he has attack patterns so he can stagger lots of enemies. If it's the shield, he can do it. If it's the dagger that's better at single targets, he can do it. If it's the shovel that's good at, well, it's kind of good at both, but he can. He, he's always going to have extra stagger, basically. And the sell it, regardless of what you do, you're always going to do, going to be quick, quick, and have extra melee damage and so on and so forth. And most of the weapons, like I said, the heavy swords are kind of not good at the moment, but so they are kind of out of this question, but I mean, the Eviscerator, you can stun lock big elites with the rev up attack, tactical axe, lots of penetration, so you can take out elites, thunder hammer, char charged up, and you can Stumble, you can stagger elites quite easily. The chain axe also, basically every every weapon except the heavy sword and the claw sword has lots and lots of penetration. I mean the thunder hammer, hammer might be a little bit worse at the crushers, but you can still use the charge up for it and have it anyway. And the same goes for all the others. Basically, every class can more or less fill every other role depending on their loadout. But every class is still very strong in their intended use so it's worth it to use them as they should but you can still if the matchmaking says you don't have a you don't have um an ogren for example if i jump in with this guy and we don't have an ogren and everybody's running axis then I can just switch to the thunder hammer and I can fill that role even though I can never fill it as good as the Ogren but I can still reasonably do it and be quite successful same with range weapons let's say we jump in and we see in there's a psyker with a flamer and the veterans using a shotgun and the oh whatever i i can i can jump on the bolter to snipe specials or the last gun to snipe specials or the stub revolver to snipe specials if i want to but but the flamer is very good at dealing with hordes. And the bolt gun is very good at dealing with elites. And yeah, gives you an opportunity like the eviscerator and the flamer. The eviscerator is a bit of a half crowd control and half, well, it's more, more, more of a cleave thing than the axis for example so if i use the axe if i want to balance that then i use a flamer 
then I have both car bo both horde control or horde kill horde killing potential and single target penetration armor penetration and elite killing ability. And if I want to do it the other way around, I can use the thunder hammer in conjunction with the bolt gun. So I unload the bolt gun into armor and I just keep staggering people with the thunder hammer. So I mean every class has these things in one shape or another. If we disregard the very undertuned things, of course, like the heavy sword. But yeah. So I think that yeah sure we want more classes, but it's not that big of a deal for me at least. Because I can mix and match and cover whatever we're lacking. And if I see someone, if I see if I see a salad with a bolt gun, I know that he's gonna be trying to unload that into elites or specials. And if I see a Psyker with the flame staff, I know he's gonna want to try to burn the hordes. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. And the blessings is kind of uh, it's, it's it's kind of the feet system, but like the the row thirty five and and forty. That's basically these, in my opinion, at least. Since you get two of them, it basically counts as one more feed. And they... They... They matter. They matter for your build. Anyway... So... That's basically the... the ne neutral things I have to talk about. So, the bad and the neutral. Well, one more thing about neutral, and it kind of ties into the to the sword that I'm that I keep talking about. Some weapons, some weapons for all the classes are kind of overtuned, and some are undertuned. But. I guess that's a balance issue, and I do believe they're gonna fix it. Because, well, they have been trying to balance things in Vermintide, so why wouldn't they here? So, anyway, on to, on to the good then. So, basically what I said about the beta, the atmosphere, and the weapons, elites, and everything about that still stays true. The atmosphere is still very, very good. And all well, the Morning Star is kind of coming alive more and more. It's more things, more things, more doors, more, more stuff, more stations, more. More little things that keep popping up with the patches that have come. So, yeah, the atmosphere is still good, and the new maps that we've gotten since the beta is also very good. They feel distinct. 
Um, I, I do like the fact that they are throwing in different objectives on the same map and just rerouting us through it because if you're doing something else on a map and you remember that one time where you were going the other direction and you remember that box where where the enemy could hide so well but you couldn't get to them now you know that well I'm coming from the other side I can actually use that cover so knowledge of the maps is more relevant because you can use it because you've seen it from the for pushing up from one side pushing up from the other side so your map knowledge gets very much better you're not all you're like if I only ever if I only ever go down this way then I might miss that there are stuff here and stuff there because I'm only running this way and let's say that Orgrin is a, a reaper or, or a reaver or whatever then I'm focused there I'm never gonna see these I'm never gonna notice some some stuff that are either aesthetically pleasing or of tactical value so I think it's good though I do agree some of them are samey or many of them are samey but kind of fits the aesthetics of the game and the setting I hope they are gonna throw us into other parks later that might be more interesting, like, I don't know, uh, pla uh, plant harvesting factory or something, where fight along dense forests artificially in line with the precision of the emper emperor or something, I don't know. So I do, I do want that diversity in the maps too, but I still think that seeing the map from different angles are very good. Uh, so, also, most of the weapons have a distinct advantage or a disadvantage, which is also very good. And it feels good even though some of them are kind of awaiting balance things for some of the outliers but yeah they have a very good solid foundation the elites they're fun and challenging and they are distinct like the the berserker coming running out on onto you which you can basically stagger Unless he has started his animation, and then you have the basically the same unit again with armor, and now you can't stagger him. So there's different thresholds. I know that. Is it JSAT? He's gone over the differences with the stagger mechanics. If you wanna, if you wanna have the nitty-gritty <laughs> nitty-gritty calculations for the stagger and damage and everything then you should keep an eye on his channel too I guess I guess it's a bit of a, a shout out well if you visit him and if you visit him tell him I said hi <laughs> I don't know yeah well anyway so, monstrosities feel nice, not not too hard, but unique, and they're very very easy. They're basically a DPS check or a bullet sponge if they are alone. 
if you have elites and stuff like that, they're, they're challenging, they bring a challenge, but it's not too much. So, that's actually good. We need more of them, more diversity. But, the two we have, or the three we have, well, actually, the two we have are challenging, and the third one is... is very hard, but it's also optional most of the time. You don't need to either, you don't need to kill it, you don't need to engage it at all. The demon host I'm talking about, of course. Don't need to, don't need to wake her or him up at all. And if you do, he's gonna kill two of you, and then he's gonna bugger off, or she. So, that's the, it kind, it kind, uh, it's kind of okay to have it harder if he's only gonna kill two, two of you. Because he can't wipe out your whole team unless you've already taken some losses, of course. But, yeah. Well, the game will still fuck you over sometimes. That's that's the Tides games in a nutshell. Regardless of how good you are and which, which difficulty you're playing at, on, you're still, you're still gonna get, you're, st you're still gonna get fucked sometime. Anyway, um, difficulties are actually decent. So let's talk a little bit about them. So, Sedition is kind of easy. You get a feel for what's gonna happen how the game plays, basically. If you see this as a tutorial, that's the, the, that's that's gonna be good. Uprising is basically the same as Sedition, but it's a little bit harder. And when you actually get to Malice, which is basically what I've been playing since, well, as soon as I get to, what is it, un unlocks at 3. So, I've played the hardest difficulties I can until I get to Malice. Malice is... consistently the best difficulty to level up until you're at... Oh, uh, I, I shouldn't be talking about that, actually, because I've tried to play Heresy at level 7, but, yeah. You know. So Malice, you can consi consistently win Malice from 3 and up. Heresy, I would recommend you, unless you are a veteran of the Tide series, then maybe went, wait until you're 20 until you try Heresy. And then stay there until you're 30 or 25 and have good gear. Depending on which character you have. Like the Salad gets very, very, very much more powerful at 30 because you get the double ult, for example. But yeah. I think they, the, the difficulties are good. I do think that at later stages of the for, for the health of the game we need one higher because I'll, I've played a few Damnations and every single time I've had to delete the footage because either either we died at the end of it like the last the last last few meters or we died at the start 
and the few the few uh, the um, the games that I've actually completed on Damnation I've either fucked up the sound for some reason or it's been basically my team carrying me because I've had too much lag or I've played very very poorly so there's no no reason to watch me. It would, would be better if the other guys have had been recording because they have had they've had a more interesting game. So I've had a bit of a difficulty getting good recordings of Damnation. I've had I've had very very fun games though, but I do think that we need one step up from Damnation later. I mean, this weapon is not that good, I guess, and 365, 322, this is what I've been running on, on Damnation, so I'm kind of a little bit undergeared, I guess, but still been it's still been doable many times not all the time the game still it's gonna fuck you over so but it's it's been doable and yeah so another good thing the combat systems very 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 nice the tide series, the blocking, the heavy attacks, the way you ex execute everything. It's very, very solid. The only thing, if I have to be nitpicky, I still think the pushback from ranged attacks are a little bit too strong. Like, you can get bogged down. But. I mean, they could fine-tune it when they increase the when they add the add the next difficulty, then it's gonna get it's it's gonna be more of an issue. Right now, it's it's fine for everything up 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 to damnation basically, but it's annoying. And it can bog you down, and well, as a sell it, it's hard hard to push up if you already use your alt, alt or alts in a previous fight, and you kind of have to stay at range. If you have a bolter, well, you can still do stuff. If you have a flamer. Just basically waiting for your team to clear out the ranged enemies if they they've set up ahead of you if you were in the choke that's harder than if you are using a choke for to funnel enemies through but other than that the combat systems really really good I have one more thing about that the optimization they're not perfect with optimization, the refinement of the control you have will be really really good. Overall, I think this is a good game. I am having fun with it. I do think they need to fix the performance issues and the server lag and things like that and for the longevity of the game I think they need to well, to keep players like me there's gonna be there's gonna we get, we're gonna need higher difficulty later and to keep to keep other players that care more about 
other stuff. Well, we need more classes. And more maps, I guess. And all the features that they promised. So... I'm not... Uh, well, there's one more thing, actually. And you might have spotted it already, because I'm using it right now. And that is... This shop has been under some... some flack. And for good reason. I guess this is goodbye. But... On the other hand, if you don't like the system they put in place, don't use it. If you don't want to get the... If you don't think it's reasonable, don't use it. That's the best thing you can do. Because if they're not selling enough, they're gonna have to do something about it. If they are selling about selling enough and people are just gonna complain, then well, they're still making money. So I don't think I don't have a problem with it personally, but I can understand that people with uh a, a, a little lesser budget. I think it's scummy to to have it the way they've had it. Now they have added the the other Aquilus packs. So heard about you. The I'll check. Yeah, the 2400 So they're in here, so you can actually buy what you need. 2400 for 2400. Yep. So. We're done I don't know. Here. The pricing is gonna be. Well, the market's gonna be controlled by the consumers and how good the goods are. So, if you don't like it, don't feel like you need to buy it. I will. Uh, I, I will say I, I, I support. I su I will support you either way, you, whichever side of the fence you are. Because I think if you buy stuff, since they've said it's a live service game. We get a higher quality game if we buy stuff. And I can see myself playing this for a very long time. Unless they don't fix the optimization issues and the server lag, of course, but... I am fairly certain that they will do. That's why... Why I'm saying this, basically, but... But yeah, if you want to buy stuff, support the developers, then we get a better game at the end. If you think it's too pricey, or if you think they've, they're using scummy tactics, or predatory tactics, or the things people are saying, if you think that, don't buy it, because then they have to then, then they have to change. So, anyway, I like this game, and I don't know. Uh, you should never trust uh, trust <laughs> a random random guy on the internet. But so I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money, but. I know that I'm gonna play it for a long time 
and I know that I'm going to have fun with it for a very long time. And I know that I will recommend this to my friends, because my friends can actually hold me responsible for my recommendations. Don't know if I'm going to recommend it to you guys, but... Well, on the other hand, I, I believe in the game, and I think it's already a good game. I'm already having fun, so... Take that as you wish. You should always, before you buy any product, product you should always look at different sources, so... There are a bunch of bunch of reviews out there praising this game, and there's a bunch of, of reviews out there that's not so nice. And I recommend you, before you decide if you want to buy it or not, check out a few videos from both ends of the spectrum. So that you're actually making an making an informed dis decision. So, with that said, that's all for me. I'll see you guys either in the next video or in a game, maybe in the future. Anyway. See you guys, have a good one.